Now at 6, a chaotic scene in the Vancouver Mall after a deadly shooting Halloween night. In the food court, second floor, we had three patients. And we figured it was safer than the neighborhood. What we know as police continue their search for the shooter. Plus, an emotional day in Clark County Court as a woman is sentenced for her role in a deadly crash. You will never get forgiveness from me, so please don't come looking for it. And later, with just days left until the election, hear from some of the candidates hoping to represent East Portland. I just heard like one after another after another, like boom, 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 boom. You can't go anywhere without worrying about getting shot anymore. Tonight, police are still looking for the person who opened fire inside the Vancouver Mall during a trick-or-treating event. A warning, the video and audio you're about to see and hear may be difficult for some people to watch. Thank you for joining us here at 6. I'm Christine Pitawanich. We are learning more about what happened Halloween night, and this evening, new video is giving us a fuller picture of what it was like for people at Vancouver Mall when someone opened fire while families were there trick-or-treating. Celine Stevens joins us now live outside the mall, and Celine, a truly scary Halloween for so many people. Christine, certainly, and police said that detectives believe that this was a targeted attack, and so that person who was wearing a Halloween mask when they shot and killed a man has not yet been identified, and today I spoke with people who were inside the mall when the shooting happened, and they told their stories. We heard a pap, pap, pap. I looked up, and it was right above us. In the food court, second floor, we have three patients. Critical, Thursday night's shooting at Vancouver Mall left one man dead and two other men with non-life-threatening injuries. The shooter, police say, wearing a Halloween-type mask. Alan Beck was trick-or-treating at the mall for Halloween with his daughter, like many other families. We figured it was safer than the neighborhood. He was in a play area of the mall with his 10-year-old daughter when he heard the shots. Parents jumped in and uh, jumped over her. And, and blocked to make sure that all the kids in that area were safe. So they, <clears throat> they made sure she was okay. Beck and other people waited until they didn't hear any more shots and then ran out of the mall. Footage from inside shows some people escaping into stores, trying to get away from the gunfire. And this video from a witness shows one of the injured victims being carried away on what appears to be a makeshift gurney. 16-year-old Bronwyn Cruden was working when it started. I like hesitated for like three seconds and I looked up and I just see like hundreds of people running with their kids and like screaming. Despite being panicked, she let them inside so they could stay safe. Fortunately, no children were physically injured in the shooting, but Cruden says she's worried about the emotional toll. I think it's just sick. Like, that was probably their first Halloween, and they'll be traumatized for the rest of their lives. The mall delayed its opening until late in the afternoon, but allowed people who left belongings inside to collect them earlier in the day. Beck says he came back Friday not to get anything, but to check on others who were at the mall at the time of the shooting, too. We wanted to come back today for other people and part of it was for ourselves because we don't want to live in fear. You can't go anywhere without worrying about getting shot anymore. Police said that the other two men who were injured were not the intended targets, but were just at the wrong place at the wrong time. The investigation is still ongoing, and police urge anyone with any information to contact the Vancouver Police tip line. Christine? Yeah, hopefully they get some valuable information from people. Celine Stevens in Vancouver for us. Thank you, Celine. To some other headlines now, police are looking for a man they think has a gun and ran away from officers earlier today. Gresham police say they tried to make a traffic stop shortly before noon near 222nd and Bonaparte Road near Damascus. But they say the driver led officers on a chase, crashed, then got out and ran. Officers thought the man had a gun, so they called in the SWAT team and surrounded the area. People living nearby were told to stay inside their homes. At last check, the order is still in place tonight. We'll keep you posted on any new developments. And deputies in Cowlitz County are investigating two deaths at a home near 48th Avenue and Olympia Way. Investigators say a 911 call came in just after 6 o'clock last night, a report of a shooting. First responders arrived and gave first aid, but both people died at the scene. The sheriff's office says there is no threat to the public. 
Portland police are sharing new details about a death in late August. They identified the man found in Northeast Portland's Park Rose neighborhood as 49 year old Vincent Butafoco. Police are still investigating and at this point we still do not know the cause of death. And take a look at this. A suspected drunk driver hit a Portland police officer's car Wednesday night on I-5. Investigators say officers were responding to a crash at Southwest Multnomah Boulevard and were parked in the right lane with emergency lights flashing. A driver, there you see it, then hits the side of the cruiser, knocking off part of the bumper. The officer inside the car had minor injuries. The driver was arrested for driving under the influence and reckless driving. Meantime, police in Tigard arrested a man after an hours long standoff at an apartment complex. Investigators say 38 year old Daniel Bean, who lives at the complex just off Southwest Shoals Ferry Road near 135th Avenue, allegedly tried to break into an apartment. Police say he also made threats and had access to weapons. The area was evacuated while officers worked to bring Bean into custody, which took around five hours. Bean is now inside the Washington County Jail. Matt. All right, Christine, thank you very much. A beautiful sunset having just happened at the Oregon coast. Here's the last of it from our Canna Beach Sky Cam. If only our whole weekend would look like that, right? It won't. We're seeing a break in the showers right now, which is fantastic, but that's not going to last. The thing that will last for the next several months is standard time. We go back to Pacific Standard Time, 2 a.m. Sunday morning, so we turn the clocks back. Don't forget, Firefighters and fire departments urge you to test your smoke alarms when we change the clocks. Make sure the batteries are working. Uh, at, we get the extra hour of sleep Sunday morning, so that's the upside. But sunset, man, that's an hour earlier. Right now, sunset is just before 6. Tomorrow, on Sunday, it'll be just before 5 in the afternoon. Sunrise will be earlier, too. Right now, it's our latest sunset of the year is tomorrow, actually. Uh, but it's going to be, we're going to catch up as we go through December, though. So, yes, we do go back to Pacific Standard Time on Sunday morning. We will see showers pick up again overnight tonight. So if you're heading out this evening, it won't be completely dry, even though it is now we get more mountain snow and quite a bit of dry time next week. Christine, we'll touch on all that in a bit. Back to you. Sounds good. Thank you, Matt. Today in a Clark County courtroom, it was an emotional day. The woman accused of driving under the influence and crashing into a Vancouver home, killing a woman, pleaded guilty in court. Devin Haskins is live outside the courthouse now, and Devin, you spoke with a family today. Yeah, and they're devastated because no matter what the sentence was, they realized that it was never going to bring her back. They're also not happy with the judge's overall sentence of eight years and four months. They were hoping for a longer sentence, I say this does close one chapter of this whole ordeal in their life. Today in court, family and friends of Danielle Abrams read statements to the judge and the woman accused of killing her. It was on August, 20, August 3rd, 2023, when Karen Baker lost control of her car as she was speeding. She was under the influence and slammed in the living room of Abrams' couch. Abrams was sitting on her couch when she and her dog were killed. The judge sentenced Karen Baker to 100 months in jail. Family were hoping for the 114 months the state had asked for. Um, I think it's a little devastating. We were essentially told that it would be nine and three quarters of a year, um, and we really had our hearts set on 10 years um, at least to save the boys the trauma of going to trial. And so the nine and three quarters was already a sacrifice. So the 8.3 years is just another slap in the face. Karen Baker also spoke at the hearing today, saying she was sorry and had remorse. As part of her plea deal, when she gets out of prison, she was told not to drive, she can't drink, and she must seek treatment. Back to you. 